Hey everybody, welcome to our weekly ecosystem office hours call. I am your host Jinx and we are joined as always by the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem. We'll kick things off today with our protocol update from Shane. Yo, yo. Uh, yeah, so uh, we're coming up to the end of uh, the iteration this week. Um, and then uh, which includes uh, the final touches on the SDK uh, and cleaning up some documentation on probabilistic proofs and things of that nature. So uh, actually a lot of uh, a lot of folks right now is just reviewing code. Um, so looking really good with closing out this iteration. Next iteration uh, will start uh, focusing on pretty much cleanup, uh, doing a lot of to do's. Um, uh, and kind of filling up some backlog of a number of things that uh, were discovered uh, at different points, um, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't the the right time to fully be diving in. So they're going to be taking an iteration just to kind of catch up on uh, a lot of kind of to do things they need to do uh, to prepare for mainnet, and then uh, and then the next iteration is going to be. Uh, focusing on tokenomics and actually starting to uh, develop the tokenomics module, uh, which is where all the the logic is going to live. So, uh, so that and adding uh, additional utility and some some things of that nature. So, uh, anyway, so we're we're right at the the end of uh, this current iteration, and uh, we're also going to be preparing to announce uh, testnet phase three that will. Or testnet phase two, alpha two, which will correlate with uh, with everything that is being finished in this iteration, and then that testnet will be about testing. Uh, that testnet will be about testing everything that is being finished this week, um, and then while the to dos are happening, we'll have a testnet active with uh, uh, ways that people can be involved. So that's where we're at. Beautiful. And uh, anyone else uh, want to contribute uh, or have anything else to add to that? I see uh, Voj is here and etc. Yeah, I, I think I can I can give the update to the, to the latest news news, um, which is related to our multi-chain update. You, you might saw the update from from their mode and uh today i actually posted a pp uh related to this multi-chain proposal um so just a short intro many of you might know me from from telegram where we actually discussed this proposal first um as initial as a, as a random idea like how to move books forward uh just a couple of months ago when we this experiment and like uh, how we can deploy Pocket to RB2 and Solana, Optimism and to other chains. Um, and Aria can actually take this opportunity and actually build it, uh, build it in a way that it allows Pocket Network to deploy across many chains, uh, not just as a wrap token, but more of the native tokens. So the native tokens actually are getting pop popular in DeFi or, or EVM ecosystem, EVM space. Um, but I, I can tell that Pocket Network will be like one of the first uh, larger projects who is adopting this direction. Uh, but there are many big uh, companies, corporations like Wormhole, who is also like pioneering uh, towards, towards native tokens. Um, I, I, I kind of build this thing out. Uh, then I presented to to PNF. Uh, I wasn't sure if we want to continue in that direction because it was a shift from from wrap tokens, uh, and it was also a delay from from perspective of launching base, uh, which we we're initially thinking about uh, having a wrap token. Uh, and I'm glad that we. I actually discussed it or um, had some argumentations of why we should go with, with native tokens compared to wrap tokens. Uh, 
and how it can influence uh, like our our possible DeFi strategy. Uh, and that that was also the time when I actually met people from PNF um, in a very interesting course uh, with them. Uh, and it was the time when I realized uh, I probably like joined PNF um, and got offered this role. Um, as you know, recently I'm perfectly on board it. So I took it. Um, and now there are like exciting times ahead of us uh, because we have this foundational work done. Uh, so the token, I can tell it's it's on the mainnet or uh, on these several chains. And what we are doing right now, we are figuring out what's the best DeFi strategy we can take, what was the best approach we can actually launch it. Um, because there's a lot of questions that we need to consider since since it's launch across multiple chains. Uh, but yeah, uh, overall, it's very excited, exciting time to it for for token for the EVM chains. Uh, and it's probably it for me. Yeah, and for anyone that's not familiar, Dermot has a post up in the forum in regards to the multi-chain strategy and the execution that uh, they've been working on. Um, I personally have been a huge fan of uh, of uh, seeing Pocket on base. I think that that's a, a, a great one from a, an ease of on-ramp and off-ramp perspective and capturing some of the, the energy that's going into developing on that network. Uh, I hadn't really thought about the impact of it just being pocket versus, you know, pocket and wrapped pocket, um, but and was highly resistant to it, probably still stinging a little from the fact that I sent USDC on Polygon to an ETH address and still haven't been able to recover that. So, you know, <laughs> uh, but I do think that from a, a total uh, volume perspective and an ease of multiplying liquidity perspective, uh, having it be a single multi-chain token is uh, the right strategy. So um, I'm I'm super excited to see what what happens with this from here on out. Uh, maybe maybe just one one last point I, I can sure. I can mention um, the, the the upcoming future is is not just about the DeFi. Um, it's it's also about um, like the exposure. Uh, that we are getting on these protocols. So we can actually allow builders on these protocols to, to build interesting use cases uh, with using book token. So you know, think of a use case where people on base would be able to take notes on base directly uh, and earn rewards from, from our native chain, uh, which would be on Cosmos. Um, that's basically the future that, that we see with, with this approach uh, with these native tokens uh, to allow anyone build on their home chain um, and surface yields there that can come from our native chain um, on these chains, like on the base and RB2 Optimism and, uh, and others. Uh, so that's like a sort of side quest, side challenge that you want to pursue in the near future. future. And I don't know a lot about the XERC20 protocol. Um, is the expectation that this allows for um, very low gas bridging movement across the, the chains? XRC20 is more like a set of best practices when it comes to bridging tokens. So um, it, it allows us to keep single contract cutters across all the EVM chains. So. Uh, it's easier for, for end users for orientation. Uh, so if like official contract, um, it also doesn't lock us to bridges. So we can use as many bridges uh, as, as we like. Right now we are, we are using wormhole um, with upcoming IBC. We are going to use Hyperlane for bridging uh, from Cosmos to EVM. Um, but we can also use number of different bridges. Um, are not, not, not locked to the specific bridge to, when it comes to bridging assets. Um, and overall, the, the architecture is, is like modular. So um, it also allows us to, to evolve in the future, like 
one possible involvement uh, with, with Cosmos uh, is we can actually implement some cross-chain governance. So the voting that happens on Cosmos uh, will be able to like cross-chain deliver to these chains, um, which means that the DAO will be able to decide uh, about future developments on these chains, uh, like how we deploy liquidity, how we uh, support any developer applications and so on. Uh, so uh, it's from the EVM perspective, it's very, very, very exciting because it allows us to build more and more features on, on the public chain. Beautiful. German. Is there anything to add? Yeah. Nothing other than I think it's it's great that Boitzek led this um, from the community side. And I know a lot of people have been excited and actually not even just excited. I think actually Pocket's been pretty isolated as a community for much of its history, partly by you know, forking Tendermint and the availability of wallets and bridges and all that kind of good stuff. So I think Rob Pocket yeah. was a huge um, on board and you know benefits the community. However, this is a real step up. Um, V2 was chosen as it was simple and easy, and we could like, onboard as many of our community members to kind of provide liquidity and be that support. But this isn't just about serving the existing community. Um, the idea with this launch is actually to massively grow the community. So I think we probably have somewhere between three to 5,000 wallets with like maybe some kind of uh, stake. I think that probably means more than ten dollars or so uh so not a huge amount maybe maybe kind of up to a hundred dollars um i think if we're successful in this we can grow the number of holders the number of active contributors um you know nodes stakers of course gateways a hell of a lot easier uh 10x plus so that's kind of this is kind of laying the foundations for the future pocket in many ways and making pocket more useful more valuable and i think we have a much better um reason for doing this than many other big ecosystems which are naturally multi-chain because you know, the ecosystems are splintered now right with um pocket being able to provide staking opportunities uh, payments for our contributors onboarding and payments for gateways all of that good stuff um yeah so I, i'm super excited and also i think as i mentioned in the post it just creates another opportunity for us to get closer with all the ecosystems that we're already supporting um you'd have seen the marketing team starting to kind of remind people of actually whether it's Moonbeam, whether it's Avalanche, whether it's Evmos or, you know, soon to be Solana and many other these other ecosystems that we've actually been serving uh, public goods kind of style um, free endpoints as well as actually direct support for some of their biggest apps. Um, Pocket is multi-chain and I guess we um, as a network and we want the token to be too. So yeah, I think I'll, I'll leave it there, but I would love um, to answer any questions if anyone has any thoughts or any ideas that they would like to see as we kind of think of the, some of the potential. Um, I'm ad libbing a bit here, but I guess there's a lot of cool things that Voitech's actually working on now that he's at um, PNF, um, whether that's kind of the future Lido model or just basic tooling for gateways. So I, I don't know if we want to get sidetracked by all that fun stuff because I'm, I'm probably getting a bit too excited ahead of my skis. Mark, that's, uh, that is all very exciting to, to see some of this stuff progressing. Uh, gateway updates. Fred, do y'all have anything on the Grove side? Struggling to find my mute button. Um, no, uh, nothing major to report from the Gateway side. Uh, anything Grove related will be covered in protocol. Beautiful. Uh, I don't see Blade on here, so uh, Dev down. Nothing major from us too. Team is still plugging away, trying to get um, all of the various uh, modules that they've created, uh, sort of working together in production, so we can start sending um, relays to the network. Uh, the optimistic timeline was the end of this month uh, or early next month. I think that's still the optimistic timeline, um, but I'm doing a catch up with them on Monday, so hopefully I have a better idea of where they're at. The the, the key bit is integrating the payment module. Um, in theory, the rest of it's working, but that final bit hasn't been integrated yet. So that's the next step, and then hopefully, good to start testing. Beautiful, thank you, sir. And uh, Raid Guild, y'all have any updates, supporters? Uh, nothing major. Just uh, 
continuing into the troubleshooting. Thanks for everybody that jumped in from your again, team and nerdies late for helping us out troubleshooting the relay issue we were having last week. Um, and we hope to be fixing that up here ASAP. But that's about it. Excellent. Um, any other updates, community uh, protocol or uh, gateway that we've missed out on? Okay, I'll take that as a now. Uh, I don't have anything uh, particularly scheduled this week from a, a presentation perspective or any major updates, but I've had a number of conversations over the last couple of weeks with uh, different folks in the ecosystem uh, around a topic that I think a lot of us have chewed on at one time or another, and I'd love to get some some insight from the people on this call, what y'all think. Um, I know that we have you know, gateways who are reaching out to um, users of RPC relays and, and uh, other active use cases. Uh, we have uh, the foundation, which uh, focuses um, primarily on, on uh, getting developers in the fold and or um, making the kinds of uh, sort of larger scale introductions like DevDAO, for instance, as a good example of that. Uh, but we we often talk about the disconnect with retail, and I wonder, you know, where do we expect the communications around retail to be centered? Uh, nobody owns that in any meaningful way, um, and we see, I think, some reflection of that in how fickle retail can be in relation to participating in the network from a financials perspective. Where do all of you think that uh, the responsibility of, of trying to craft messaging around retail participation should live or, or should it be anywhere? Should we really just not care about that sort of participation at all? I'm gonna open the floor to anyone who has any ideas they'd like to share. I'm happy so to um, not go first. Not only having no, twice as much as you fucking should on a house, the shit that we're dealing with the materials is absolute junk. Yeah, sure, it looks great when you put side on the inside. You can't see what the, the building materials are. Of course, it looks good. All the lipstick on the table. I think that was. They ain't fucking warm. They're full of knots. They're full of worms. It sounds like a TV coming through. Uh, Ian, I've, I've server metered you. Uh, if you want to ping me in chat when the outside volume is off, I'll take you off. So I'm you. Pressure treat your Dermot, I could I couldn't hear what Ian was saying. Um, it it really was respond to. Yeah, it was okay. it was television noise or something. It wasn't actually uh, saying anything. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, it, it it did sound quite dramatic. Um, I think it's a great question, and I think it's something we haven't done very well. I, I'd actually say historically, ads has been brilliant for leveling up our game, but I'd say historically actually. Pocket's been really bad at marketing and comms and design. Um, and actually, as a result, even Pocket in its heyday in 2022, Pocket was essentially a meme around, you know, being the, the alternative, like the decentralized infura, but actually people didn't realize the technical stuff happening, happening under the hood, you know, how difficult it was to be the first decentralized RPC, one of the very first deep ends. All of this good stuff has never really traveled. And actually, I think Pocket's success has been kind of small but powerful. You see the strong ties at the core of the community and actually kind of the investor community. And it kind of means you have to be really close to a lot of the core team, I think, to often understand the true potential and vision of Pocket. Um, and so that's been a failure of our comms that it hasn't scaled globally as well as it should or could do um, to many different audiences around the world. Um, I think sometimes we're probably already mid-curved it, right? Instead of actually thinking about um, how do you speak to the left curve in simple, easy to understand, accessible language and then also then to the right curve we've probably dumbed it down the wrong way and actually sold ourselves short so i, th I think um 
Ads is aware of this. Um, Larissa is really going to level up our game. And I, I think when we say retail, really everyone in crypto, whether you're a, a DAO contributor, a node runner, a gateway, you are likely actively buying and supporting these networks. So we do want to speak to all of these um, different audience types, even if they all have slightly different needs and wants and things they care about. So um, I would say it's definitely not just on the foundation to speak to these audience, but definitely we can do a much better job and help the communities do so too. Um, but I think with a simpler narrative that we can all understand and share, um, more help from the community, I, I, I'd love to hear from everyone else, but that's kind of my take of, I think generally speaking at Pocket, at Grove back in the day at the foundation, to date, we haven't been fantastic. I think we're getting better. Um, but I think you'll start to see our comms get clearer, simpler, more focused, um, and hopefully a lot more exciting as well. Um, but yeah, we, we we cannot do it all on our own, right? The pro what makes Pocket special is its community. So I think uh, having everyone here, being able to help and share their thoughts, um, and yeah, be part of that kind of Pocket Army, army is, uh, is super important. But yeah, keen to hear from everyone else. Thanks, sir. Other thoughts? Okay, well, I see Miss Kitty typing. Jerry, you'll just have to cut these empty spots out when you edit later. Yeah, we'd love to hear from, I mean, Shane or Miss Kitty or, yeah, I mean, Tracy or Dan. Like, I think a lot of people on this call actually have a lot of um, insights and exposure to other ecosystems too. So yeah, it'd be cool to hear from other people on this point. Yeah, I think so as well. And that's that's part of the reason I wanted to, uh, um, you know, bring this up as a topic of conversation. Miss Kitty said, what does retail even know or care about RPCs? In my experience, they like high APRs and something to speculate on. I agree. And I think it's some of the most interesting conversations that I think have come out of, uh, you know, conversations in the Telegram or whatever are some of the most uh, challenging to the orthodoxy. I think uh, a few different folks have talked about uh, you know, in contrast to the the path to deflationary, uh, about how the lack of higher emissions is part it removes some of the incentive to to stake and speculate within the network um, because if we're down to you know a a sub five percent emission rate they're not going to see the same level of upside emissions that they might see in in uh, you know networks that are uh, just now launching with a, a far higher inflation rate. And we've seen, I, I actually saw some criticism of, of uh, Cosmos ecosystem chains in general in one of the, um, the crypto uh, groups that I follow yesterday. And they said verbatim, oh, another Cosmos chain. Um, that means high inflation, then slow uh, downdrift in price until uh, until it's basically zeroed out. And I kind of laughed at that a little bit because it it does seem to have been a trend among a number of of chains that uh, are are in this ecosystem. But you know, it, it's what I haven't seen yet, uh, and, and I think I've seen you know strong argument in favor of, but I haven't actually seen the outcome of um, is 
you know, a chain actually reaching a deflationary state and growing in value because of it. I thought it was really interesting to see uh, Shane's charts on proposed tokenomics um, in be at a, a deflationary state returning to a, a, oh shoot, can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, Miss Kitty apparently lost my audio. Um, Oh, Pockets APR is 10 to 11%, by the way. Okay, yeah, uh, fair enough, right? Uh, emissions at 4.99 across the total network with about half staked. I mean, that's, yeah, that math checks out. Um, but it was interesting to see the the spreadsheet showing more of a return to uh, a dynamic earnings model based on volume uh, where we've been in this, you know, sort of fixed emissions schedule for a while and how you know, achieving a deflationary state would actually kind of reintroduce some of those previous models. I, you know, I, I, I've been up and down on whether or not strong deflationary methods are, are should be the priority, I guess, is the thing to say. Um, it's without the easy incentive of high APR, I do see the point in, in, uh, people's concerns over what's the incentive and what's the return. Uh, but, you know, we, we also still have the issue of higher inflation tends to lead mathematically to a devaluation of the token along the way. Uh, it's, it's something that seems simple on the surface, no matter which direction you're, you're spending on, um, you know, like, it seems to be a lot more complicated than it would appear to be on the surface. I guess that's the the thing I'm trying to say. Dermot mentions, I'd argue that most people aren't aware of all the cool and exciting stuff happening in Pocket. Uh, why does Anchor, a traditional RPC provider, have almost 250,000 Twitter followers? And RPC is fundamental, just not well explained. Uh, that's That's a good question. Why does Anchor have almost 250,000 Twitter followers? Uh, they're not a terribly exciting organization. Uh, for all of our concerns about inflation, they have 10 billion tokens fully diluted. Uh, clearly, it's not about the volume of tokens or anything else when it comes to driving that. Uh, I think that's actually a great question that should be answered. Why is their exposure so much higher? Well, I've got part of the, I've got part of the answer, and uh, she's actually just joined PNF as our new head of digital media content and that's larissa she was there um to grow that from i think what maybe sub 50k to 250k on anchor so i think a lot of it is actually how you communicate and who you target so i think just better comms generally speaking will get people excited and aware and we have so much more exciting stuff to talk about than anchor right from our community our protocol our governance our gateway strategy all of that good stuff so um I think that is the alpha and that's the opportunity for us. But um, yeah, we'd love to hear from others around what they'd like to see more of and how as well on different mediums and everything else in between. Yeah, Breezy mentions like Alchemy, they seem to create a platform where they tailor to devs by creating tools for them to develop on. I, I strongly agree with this. One of the things that I really like about uh, Anchor's platform um, that I've suggested, you know, that we should have in the pocket website multiple times is that they have actual swagger type um, API interfaces for all of their chains that allow you to go in and make test calls and see returns, like really useful tooling for developers who aren't part of the ecosystem yet. Uh, and, and that is absolutely the kind of thing that, that I think that it would be worth spending some time and, and development costs on. Yeah, I mean, what, one area to keep in mind with Anchor is they are, uh, I mean, they, they've been in liquid staking. Um, they have a bunch of liquid staking stuff. They have a lot of staking stuff. Uh, you know, they, you know, they, they do hit a number of different markets. Um, it's not just RPC. Right? Um, I believe the Anchor community is full of quite a diverse group of people that, discovered anchor through a bunch of different um uh you know through different means because they they do have a lot of 
kind of I, I would say like horizontal growth where they you know are, are are trying to get into a bunch of different areas so i think their their spread is a little uh is a little more diverse so i i i just think that's worth being aware of when talking about uh when talking about anchor uh you know they've but then on the other hand they've uh you know they aren't actually you know like a really true decentralized infrastructure right so um they also kind of play with the the market branding of decentralized infrastructure um even though that's and, and that's honestly where they also got uh you know a lot of their early narrative and then they switched from really truly being decentralized to running most of their own infrastructure um i don't know if i i, I just know that a few years ago uh or probably like two years ago or a year ago they were running literally their own infrastructure so you calling that like decentralized is 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 definitely a stretch so anywho all just talking points related to anchor um but they've never had like a node running community um you know they've never had any of that uh and you know lava does have someone like lava that's getting into the space um you know they do uh you know kind of kind of have a you know that independent node running community um involved in uh you know very active there so that's that's why i think things like max chains and then uh shannon bringing in um hopefully the ability to uh uh to have nodes also stake to a region would be huge because then we could also have uh, re uh, reinvigorate that independent node running community because specialists from any chain can can join Pocket. So Gandalf, uh, which is I believe is finishing tomorrow, technically, um, yeah, that that'll start the ball rolling. Um, so I, I guess with retail, it's it's who 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 are our market, right? Who who's exactly our market? Um, and I've been thinking about kind of Shannon and areas of uh, how how can we stimulate the the growth in um, the growth in uh, in the supplier ecosystem because I think Shannon does a great job with Shannon in uh, with sources and it does a great job with gateways um, and then suppliers it it's just not it's not changing much um it's it you know it'll 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 be similar uh kind of to now um it, it won't create any great change other than it'll be easier for people to join with significantly less infrastructure which is great but yeah i'm just thinking through what the advantages are and and you or what the possible advantages could be with with different models but what uh you mentioned before jinx about like that model that i shared you know what's interesting is once we hit a deflationary threshold the rewards start increasing uh relatively significantly actually um as we go past deflation so uh or, or like get past that point um because then everything is relying entirely on uh mint and burn so whatever is being minted is being is because it's being burned by gateways and so that actually could generate a significant you know where a significant growth where if it goes up um you know a billion relays well before we hit the deflationary period going up a billion relays really didn't have that much of effect but now after deflation going up a billion relays that's literally a billion more paid relays going directly to uh uh node runner so so the question is is there an intermediary kind of system that we can have that can that can create growth until we get to that point with deflation where growth will be natural it'll literally be natural because uh growth in the uh market uh inside pocket literally will start going directly to node runners in an awesome way so what what could be the the middle ground to to hopefully get us get us to that point where we can still have excitement on the supplier side? Those are questions I've been literally thinking about. Yeah, I, I mean, and that's 
to me, that was one of the things that I thought was really interesting about that model. Um, I, it's the, the, I think there are a number of disconnects in our ecosystem between performance and upside and fixed emissions um, are in my mind, one of those things, you know, if, if uh, in a model where we are tying, um, you know, tying performance of the network or emissions to the network to growth, we have a strong explanation for where um, that additional value is coming from, right? A, a token is being emitted because there's X amount of work being done by the network. And that was a strong part of our narrative, I think, for a while. Uh, and one that's that's gone away. Uh, as part of the the current structure, uh, that was one of the things that I really liked seeing about um, about the model is that there's a the, your model is that there's a potential for a, a rise in growth of uh, compensation uh, based on uh, additional adoption within the network. Something that I think has been missing for a while. Um, John said, uh, "I don't see the future tied to retail. Agree, they have no interest in RPCs." Higher inflation is not sustainable. The future is tied to selling more RPCs, getting to deflationary. Uh, token demand is then driven by staking for throughput, and the stake burn protocol is then valued on discounted cash flow, actual protocol income. Uh, generating speculation is not a sustainable strategy. Growing that adoption is sell, sell, sell. You know, I, I mean, I, I don't disagree from a hard economics perspective. Um, but I don't know of any marketplace at all between TradFi or crypto that doesn't, in, in a very significant way, rely on retail participation and retail dollars as part of the health of that network. Um, the protocol being valued on discounted cash flow and actual protocol income is a good model for you know uh, how the underlying valuation might be part of it, but without retail dollars participating in a meaningful way in that greater marketplace, it's just a smaller market cap in general, um, and by a lot. I mean, part of the reason that Solana gained the market cap that they have is not because, um, you know, their, their underlying token generation mechanism was so powerful, it's that people, retail in particular, um, was wildly on board with pump dot fun and various other you know fun meme coin type things that allowed for uh, speculation and so they're putting their dollars there and i'm certainly not suggesting that pocket should become uh, a token casino because that's not our thing at all uh, but i i think that fundamentally we have to be accessible to retail dollars in a meaningful way and we had a really good narrative for that a few years back when people were saying, although not entirely accurately, um, Pocket is a decentralized AWS. Um, it, it was easy for people to wrap their minds around even you know, fairly limited technology people. Uh, and, and I don't think that we've had messaging or a narrative that's that simple and accessible uh, since then. Well, and uh, like when you look at, because I remember one of the, you know, kind of big first influxes of retail interest, um, it, at least in my mind, came from a few points. But one was like when uh, Chico Crypto, you know, covered Pocket. Yep. And, you know, it was all about the decentralization. Anyone can run your own node. Look how many nodes are running on this network. Um, you know, I think those kind of things are are really powerful messaging because when people see that, when they see the decentralization, I think that most people uh, see that as a very positive thing. And and network, um, uh, you know, network diversity, network uh, uh, size is is something that has driven pockets, uh, uh, driven people being interested in pocket in the past. So I'd like to, I'd love to see that kind of continue. Right now, we don't have that diversity because it's oh, you basically have to go with a provider. There's just no way to to not do it yourself. Um, I mean, we had a huge influx of people asking about, you know, how to run things. And um, uh, I believe that was also around the time where the DAP node, uh, uh, someone started to build DAP node because yep. um, a lot of uh, Chico Crypto's uh, user base was involved in DAP node. So I, I, 
and and then also we saw a huge influx when we started launching new chains kind of early on and we had like uh like we got quite a few uh people from the avalanche community joining pocket from uh, <coughs> uh the ability for them to double dip their uh their nodes you know they're already running their nodes for some other reason like validation but now they can also generate rpc rewards and those kind of narratives were super uh, uh super strong with going into those communities um so anyways i think sources really opens up that those kind of partnerships again with those with those networks uh it's all about getting in front of more people with a really strong narrative and sources open up the perfect opportunity to uh, incentivize uh, these different networks to want to participate with Pocket, have these kind of co-marketing uh, involvement, uh, because the more that people join Pocket, th they actually will uh, generate more reward themselves. So it's a huge win for them. Uh, that was what was missing with our past relationships. Is is you know it's more. They're doing it because, okay, this is a good narrative for our community, but there's not an intrinsic value kind of after that. Um, but Sources really does kind of open up the door for some of these networks to have a long lasting interest in Pocket. Um, yeah, I was super excited when DAP nodes started to become an option because, you know, I think the um, small form factor desktop nodes is, is where all of crypto should go. You know, the idea that, there are tens of thousands of, of ETH nodes across the, the country, right? Like to me, that's that's ideal. That is uh, um, the fulfillment of, of decentralization and blockchain. Um, but as nodes got more complicated to run, um, you know, they they uh, obviously moved away from from uh, from that being the case. So. Um, Gandalf is a good step one in, in simplifying nodes again. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see where it goes from there. I see some additional typing happening in the chat there and a lot of conversation there. So if you're not seeing the sidebar chat, you're definitely missing out on an additional dimension. Sorry for those of you who are listening uh, after the fact. One of the things that Dermot says in here is the Lido model post Shannon will enable easy onboarding of input providers in any ecosystem, as well as the potential to get that call option on overall crypto demand, as you say, through a ST pocket token. And Wojciech says, retail being able to farm APY with no minimal stake on any chain sounds pretty exciting to me. One of the things that we originally had in the, the W Pocket Green paper that I think that there's room to explore and bring back maybe is the idea of DAP users staking tokens on behalf of the, the DAPs that they support or the chains that they support. Um, I think that there was a secondary mechanism built into the economy from that, which we've really fundamentally missed out on um, given the the changing execution around w pocket uh, as it turned out um I, i'd be interested to see more uh, about that and shane of course says true but need the exciting apy for that to be true yeah that's that's kind of that that's why i think there's some contention around you know where do these numbers end up and do we have a a fixed model or a dynamic model and you know so, just to jump in on this because i think that's also it's something that i think everyone in the community does um often get like um it messes around but i guess the, some of the terminology i guess the apr is like your base return right denominated pocket um and yeah none of this obviously investment advice or anything like that but i think people like eth because they believe that it's you know it's a long-term future of the space right and actually being able to get a 
decent yield, I think it's what, what, three to 4% or something on ETH, but they expect that to go up over time. That feels like they think it will beat inflation. So the actual yield is higher. So I think APR is the base rate, but yield is actually what you get in kind of like dollar terms, basically whatever your base asset is. So yes, you can get sometimes temporarily on paper, super high APRs in certain ecosystems, but usually that's bullshit, you know, literally dog coins or meme coins right so that may be fleeting and so you're never going to get that for the full course of the year so the idea that that yield will stay for 12 months plus is just not true and often those rewards will go down over time so you're actually in that you may be lucky in the short term but very unlikely to get that in the long term i think what we're building a pocket is actually fundamental value but actually people can tap into and i think that yield that um miss kitty was talking about in terms of this native crypto yield and potentially any other open data source yield is actually pretty cool and, and definitely native to pocket. So I think that should grow over time as gateways bring more and more demand as well. So I think that's what we're building. And pocket is really at the start of its journey. It's just for the first time I've actually removed a lot of those headwinds. So yeah, I guess that's why I think it's interesting. But I think if we're one of those projects that's trying to compete on just yields, we're, I mean, that's not a project I want to be part of because we're so much bigger than that. Yeah, I, I I agree with you there. The uh, kind of what I what I mentioned before is I I think our yield naturally starts to get exciting once we hit deflation, because then it literally uh, you you can see really cool um, increases as uh, as relays increase. Um, so so I, I I that's that's the long term model. That's absolutely the long term model. Uh, and then it really just comes down to the question of, to me at least, uh, you know, are, are there, are there ways to, 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 you know, encourage growth in, in this time before the natural, uh, takes place. Um, and now that we have kind of a really clear way to measure when will natural, uh, you know, uh, growth start happening and and around the deflationary period um or at the deflationary threshold once we cross that threshold it starts uh rewards are getting exciting so we, we know when our rewards rewards naturally start getting exciting in the market so then the question is what are strategies that could be done to uh elicit excitement uh up until that point right um and or you know is there a need for that or is there not a need for that uh so that's that's at least kind of my my thoughts and where my my mind's going We are getting up to the top of the hour here. Any uh, final thoughts that uh, y'all would like to share? John says we should be asking how we get to 20 billion relays per day, not how to pump retail speculation by an unsustainable high yield. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a. I, I will clarify here that I'm certainly not asking how to pump retail speculation by an unsustainable high yield. Uh, I'm really asking about how do we get meaningful participation from the retail marketplace, which is something that the vast majority of of well performing tokens has. Um, and meaningful participation doesn't mean promising you know a million dollars a day or anything along that line what it does mean is you know having an accessible narrative that people can get behind without being heavy infrastructure engineers um, and you know something that they want to participate in uh, people invest in microsoft and amazon and you know all the fang stocks and and uh, a number of other types of products often without having a really good sense of of you know the fine points of the technology aspects of those things um, but they do buy into a narrative of a strong performing organization which will be uh, a good investment over the long term and and you know there's a lot to be said about that so you know i just want to clarify where things are going with that and i i bring up the um inflation conversation because people have talked frequently including in this chat uh you know today uh, about the incentive of high apr apy which is uh, which has been a driver of uh meaningful retail participation in the past um, 
it certainly is not likely to be a meaningful driver of retail participation in the future. And so then, you know, that leaves the question of, you know, how do we achieve a narrative that is exciting to people who are not measuring uh, network performance by the millisecond? Yeah, and I'd also like to say we're. I, I don't think anyone's saying unsustainable high yield. Like I don't. Yeah. I don't think that that's what anyone's saying. So I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, pigeonhole the conversation into, uh, you know, into this is what people are trying to promote. We're we're not trying to promote that. In my mind, what I'm trying to do, it, it, where my mind goes, is literally back to my own experience with something like Avalanche, where we went to a new chain, we partnered with them, we had multiple uh, cross community. Uh, uh, we had like two different like. Uh, or we had, we had a few written pieces with them. We had a, a, a cross community um, uh, Twitter spaces, and we literally had tons of interest uh, from Avalanche people joining Pocket. Like I was, I was literally the one leading that uh, um, initiative, and we were having their join uh, community joining. I was being tagged all the time in their Discord um, because they would have an RPC issue, and then they would tag me and just be like, "Hey, you guys should." Uh, check out Pocket, and and Shane can explain it. You know, like that's what uh, that that's what we were enjoying, right? Uh, and the reason was because the node runners, the part, the people already participating in that network, wanted to join Pocket because there was uh, something interesting there for them to be a part of. So we're not talking about unsustainable high yields. Yeah, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about creating interest so that we uh, we don't have to. Um, we don't have to negate where we've had success in the past. Now we yep. had success in the past in an unsustainable way. Everyone and their mother will, uh, uh, you know, agree to that, right? <laughs> no one's yep. disagreeing with that. But I also don't think that uh, I also think that we can be creative, and we can't come up with a way that incentivizes people that does it not in an unsustainable way, but in a very measured way, um, and especially especially with uh, the option of uh new economic models uh i really think that we can do this uh you know we we have a model that is super sustainable not going crazy very business centric anyone who wants business centric uh defi i think pocket is going to be the standard like it, it is literally going to be the standard that doesn't mean though that we can't be uh creative with how we uh uh you know, incentivize growth in a certain area because I think ultimately this is this is where Pocket is or any good project is going to be, where they figure out okay where do we where could we use growth and how can we attract that area into into growth. That's why I uh, uh, came uh, came up with kind of the concept of sources was because back in my my day with PNI, uh, I was literally talking to indexers that didn't have an interest in joining Pocket because there wasn't anything in for them, right? And so we have entire communities that just didn't care about Pocket because, well, why do I care about other people running my software and making all this money? What do I get out of it? And they literally had no reason to join. And they're like, I'm going to focus instead on my Gitcoin grant because there's actual revenue there, right? So <laughs> like, that's it, it's looking at these different areas and figuring out, okay, how can we incentivize these people to join us? Uh, or how can we incentivize growth in these areas? So that's what economics is. That's what any decentralized, good decentralized product and project will do. Um, yep. So yeah, we're we're not at all talking about runaway anything. Um, and I, I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't. Uh, wouldn't categorize these kind of conversations as trying to do that, uh, or trying to take away from trying to get to twenty billion relays a day. I mean, insane amount of work has gone into making a tokenomic system that meets all of our goals and it allows there to be permissionless gateways because we want to hit the 20 billion dollar uh, uh or the 20 billion you know relays a day so yeah we're, we're not taking away from all that tons and tons of work that has happened on the protocol side and on the economic side uh when we talk about hey is there a way to also incentivize growth growth in the uh supplier side. And my one last comment on this will be uh, with the, uh, oh, shoot. My one last comment will be, totally lost my train of thought. So, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> if people already, if people already are with providers, there's, it, it is going to be harder 
for people that are already with providers, already uh, kind of in uh, with a provider already, to want to become then transition into becoming a independent node runner. That transition is going to be hard. What is not going to be hard, as hard, is getting people from other communities to want to join Pocket as independent node runners. So that's why, so these incentives aren't necessarily, uh, these incentives are to attract more people in the node running communities from these others to join Pocket to allow us to get to that narrative again of being decentralized, being independent node runner friendly, having a uh, tons of conversations going on inside Discord about people learning and figuring out nodes. Like we wanna get back to all of that. And I don't think that that's gonna come from uh, like people existing in the current, ecosystem that are, you know, staked with providers or something like that. This is going to come from specialists and people of interest uh, in these communities that want to join Pocket and do it on their own. Um, and so what what are ways that we can attract that? So those are the kind of questions that I think are worth answering. Yeah, I, I, and I'll wrap this by by reiterating, you know, when we're talking about the conversations around inflation and those types of things, what we're talking about is um a previously existing incentive that is no longer the case and importantly hasn't been replaced um and and we certainly see the impact of that uh in, in the marketplace over the last two years uh, i think that gandalf actually is probably one of the strongest examples that i've seen of a proposal that actually has a byproduct effect of of helping to drive a solution for that um, by bringing in communities who are not currently participating, much like your avalanche example, um, since they can sort of double dip, they can run, uh, they can connect pocket to their existing chain nodes that they're already running. They can generate, uh, um, you know, additional income potentially through, uh, the, the champions tokenomics. Uh, that was talked about, um, you know, I mean, these are some of the kinds of ideas that I would like to see more of ways to meaningfully replace incentives that aren't there. Uh, I think part of the reason why conversations around, uh, uh, you know, inflation still can be so contentious is because of the fact that uh, we just don't have those other mechanisms like fully in place yet. So. Um, good food for thought, and I'd, I'd certainly love to see more community conversation about that. Uh, I'd, I'd love to hear any of y'all's ideas. Uh, if you want to DM me directly or in a group environment, uh, please do let me know your thoughts. Uh, and that will be all for this week. We will see y'all again, same time, same channel, next week.